Hey guys, in this video, I will be going over nuclear tech mod updates from past two months and there's a lot of stuff to cover. So make sure to use the timestamps in the description if you are looking for something specific. Starting with power production, the first machine that we have is the steam engine. It has three access ports, one for outputting low pressure steam, another for power and the third port for inputting steam. Only normal steam is supported. You can't use any type of compressed steam. The power produced by the steam engine is in factors of 1.7 kWh per second. So if you input 1000 millibuckets per second, then you will get out 1.7 kWh per second. Right now we are inputting this or basically we are inputting 5000 millibuckets per second of steam. That's why the power that we are producing will be something around 8500 Hg per second. The startup of this engine is pretty cool as you saw here and the noise that it makes is also amazing. So in short, it's an amazing power source for the early game or if you want to make a boiler power plant. And as you can see here, 17 times 5 is 85. So the energy we are producing right now is 8.5 kWh per second. So that's the steam engine. And also once you basically stop the supply of steam in it, it will slow down in the same fashion that it started, which is also pretty cool. So yeah, that's the steam engine. Next, we have the industrial combustion engine, which is an industrial version of the diesel engine. Now, by default, it will take diesel, but you can basically set it to any other fuel that you want to. The burn rate can be adjusted, and also there are different set of pistons which it can use. So the first piston is the steel, which is best for low-grade fuel. Then we have high-speed steel for medium-grade fuel. Dash piston set is best with high-grade fuel and star metal for aviation-grade fuel. Here I am going to use the dash piston set because let's run this entire setup on kerosene. So set the engine to kerosene like this and using the four input ducts you can have fuel basically going in on any side and one of the ports can be used for getting the power out. So once the kerosene is inside now you can configure the burn rate and the higher the burn rate the more power you are going to produce. So once I turn it on, it starts producing power. It's as simple as this. The increment for burn rates is in term like 0.2 millibuckets per tick. So yeah, you can take it as high to 6 millibuckets per tick. So that's the industrial combustion engine. One thing that I forgot to mention was that the steam engine can actually be maxed out. So the maximum power that a single steam engine can produce is 68 kWh per second. And in order to produce this amount of power, you need to feed it with 40,000 millibuckets per second of steam. So if you have an RBMK reactor that can produce much more steam than this value, then you are going to need multiple steam engines in order to sustain it. Now another thing that changed was the fuel values. For different fuels like ethanol, niton, coal oil, the burn values were changed and also solid fuel is now kind of less efficient than liquid fuel. So that's that. Coming to heat based machines, the very first thing that we have is the coke oven. So coke oven is basically a firebox which burns much hotter but it also consumes fuel much faster. So it can burn five times hotter than a simple firebox but it will consume fuels eight times faster. So as you can see, the speed of the steel furnace with just a single coke oven is a lot compared to what it would be if you were using a firebox. Another machine or the heat based machine we have is the combination oven. Now the combination oven can convert coal into coal coke and also coal tar creosote. Now this oil can, we can get it out and you can treat it like any other fluid. So you can process this fluid right now if you want to or you can store it in a barrel for future use. Also one more thing is that the oven is a dangerous machine kind of. So if you stand on top of it while it is operating, you are going to get burned. Another recipe in the oven is converting wood into charcoal. Now this also gives you wood oil which can then be converted into aromatic hydrocarbons through the cracking process. Highly recommend using NEI in order to check these recipes. Now we have a new method of obtaining iron and copper which is using hematite and malachite. So 
For this, we are going to need flux. And in order to produce flux, you either need to combine charcoal with sand in order to give you flux, or you can combine coal powder with sand, which will give you two stacks of flux instead of a single one. There are also other recipes. You can check them out using any eye. Now in the crucible, by combining flux with these ores, you can get iron and copper respectively. So first I have placed the recipe for hematite and combining this ore with flux will give us the iron ingots. It will also give slag and this is exactly the same process which you need to follow for copper. So we have another template for copper which is the malachite production template and combining it with the flux, yeah, with flux it will give you copper. Now the fluid system has been overhauled and fluid transfer is much faster than what it used to be. So these are all of the different types of pipes or the new type of pipe that are available. This is the standard variant of pipe and then we also have the square or the boxed variants. Now you can dye them up and combine them and once they are all combined you can get some pretty sick looking textures. So that's that and also the box ducts or the box pipes come in five different types of sizes. So you can have one which can occupy nearly a full block or you can have which one of them which is like very thin. So yeah. Now the most useful feature in this fluid update was the flow gauge. And what flow gauge allows you to do is see how much fluid is passing through a system at any given second. So right now this entire system or the steam engine is consuming 5000 millibuckets of steam per second which is shown by the fluid gauge. The fluid gauge can also be used as a pipe itself. So like right now, if I set this fluid gauge to low pressure steam, then there is no pipe, but the low pressure steam will be transferred into the barrel through the gauge itself. And the amount of low pressure steam that is being transferred can be seen here. So yeah. Now I made a complete video on this, so highly recommend you check that out. But now RBMK reactors can be cooled using the RBMK fluid heaters. So using coolant or mugroot beer or even crude oil, is now an option in order to cool down an RBMK reactor. So the coolant will be converted into hot coolant and that hot coolant will then go in a fluid heat exchanger which will be then used to heat up a boiler and the boiler will convert water into steam. And this is only a one time process. So once you fill up your RBMK reactor with coolant, then you won't need to fill it up again. So that's a really neat way of cooling down an RBMK reactor. Another game rule that was added was the enable meltdown overpressure. What this game rule will do is when an RBMK reactor explodes, it will also explode the pipes which are connected to it and any machines which are connected to the pipes like tanks or turbines will explode. So I have connected two tanks, a water tank and a steam tank to this RBMK reactor and now let's make it go boom. So for that, I think I'm going to use the high enriched plutonium rod and once the RBMK explodes, you will see that the steam tank also exploded with it. If instead we had turbines, the turbines would have exploded and yeah, it's a pretty realistic game rule if you want to turn it on. Now we have something which is like very useful and that is wireless redstone in nuclear tech mod. Now this is done using redstone over radio transmitter and receiver. Once you set the transmitter and receiver to the same frequency, here I'm going to assign the frequency 1. And if you directly power the block on which the torch is sitting, then that signal will be transmitted with the same strength with which it went into the transmitter. So that's wireless redstone now in nuclear tech mode. Coming to the updates in machines, deuterium extractors are very fast now. So now you can max them out completely and the maximum rate, as you can see here, is 1400 millibuckets per second while using seven heavy buckets of water. Each heavy bucket of water will contribute to like 200 millibuckets per second of heavy water being produced every second. And the power consumed is the same, 1 million HE per second. And then we have the centrifuge, which has an updated GUI. And also now it can take in upgrades. So now the GUI of centrifuge is like this. There are four steps in total. 
and once the fourth bar is full, we'll get our output in the bottom slot like this. The updates that it can take is the overdrive upgrade, which will highly increase the speed as you can see here. Then we have the speed upgrade, which will moderately increase the speed. And finally, we have the power saving upgrade, the most useful one out of them all for the early game and the mid game. So that's the centrifuge and finally we have the flamethrower tur turret which is Fritz and now this turret can accept many more fuel compared to what it could take before. The grade of the fuel will determine how much damage this turret is going to do. So for example now you can fill it up with something renewable which is liquid hydrogen and the turret will use liquid hydrogen as a fuel and damage mobs or basically whatever you set. So the turret now is actually much more useful than what it used to be because it can take in renewable sources. Next we have some armor mods, the first one of them being the gas sensor and the gas sensor will take once you are near a gas which is either like poisonous or flammable. So here you can listen how it takes when we are near a flammable gas. Another armor mod is the diffuser or oh sorry the creeper diffuser i guess i forgot the exact name for oh uh, yes the golden wire cutter and what the golden wire cutter will do is that it will diffuse any creeper near you so the creeper will either drop copper wire or safety fuse and yeah it won't explode they will still try to attack you but the creepers can no longer explode when you are wearing an armor with this mod and the final armor mod is the neutrino lens which can be linked to a depth resource scanning satellite. Now once you have linked these two, you can launch the satellite as you normally do. And once the satellite is in orbit, then the neutrino lens, when equipped, will show you items of interest. And yeah, it can show you coltan, bed bedrock oil deposit or the normal bedrock oil deposit. So yeah, it's a pretty useful upgrade and you can attach it to a helmet and as this is a super flat world there is nothing to be shown here but in a normal world you would be able to see that and finally this is not a nuclear attack mod update but instead an energy control upgrade but finally this mod is working once again with nuclear attack mod and its latest updates it no longer crashes and the all of the previous features that it had are there back again and some of the newer machines will be added later on so if you guys like this video, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any future updates. Peace out and stay safe.